Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live. I'm so excited that you are with me, and we're going to be studying the book of 1 Corinthians. Can you believe we have completed the book of Revelation? That was so exciting. But here's this new book, 1 Corinthians. We're going to give you a background to the book, and then we're going to go through verses 1 through 3. So much to learn, and we're just going to be asking the Lord to be with us. As the weeks go by with this study, we're going to really learn a lot, brothers and sisters. This is one of the, the 66 books of the Bible, and I know that it's going to be so rich for you and I. So come on into fellowship, and we're going to be singing classic uh, Calvary Maranatha songs and some old hymns as well. And uh, we, we love the new ones, but I'm kind of like the Calvary classic guy. I know a lot of you guys appreciate that. <clears throat> And so just worship along with me, whatever you're doing. If you can relax, that's great. If you can't, just do Facebook Live on the go. Uh, but w the bottom line is we just want you guys in the Word of God. Feel free to comment as well um, and leave prayer requests. We are a praying community of God's people and we care about each other. We've been developing uh, relationships with, with one another. We're almost at the five year mark of this program. Praise the Lord. I can't believe it. And so God has been so good to us and we've learned so much. We've gotten to know one another. If you're new, come on in. We're just about an hour or so or under an hour. Try to keep everything short and sweet and inspirational. Uh, for a lot of us who are locally, it's like a Sunday night service and others who are in different time zones. Uh, you know, it's just that beautiful addition of God's Word to your life. A lot of this stuff was going on during COVID. All the pastors were out there. But you know what? We started this even before COVID, and we went through it and after it. And we just believe that God has a, a plan for this kind of program. And so many people come on and watch it later. They see it and go, I'm going to try Pastor Louis' study. And they come in, and they're blessed and people still comment later on. And so it gets a lot of mileage. And God's word never returns void. Amen. So we're so glad that you've come on in. And let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much that you are here, Lord. That you are just being glorified in our midst. We just love you so much, Lord. And we just pray that you would fulfill your purpose and your plan in and through us, Lord. As we just dedicate this time to you and this new study of 1 Corinthians we pray this, the prayer of the Psalms, open thou my eyes, Lord, to receive wonderful things from thy word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, already we've got Donna coming in saying, hi, Pastor Louie. Hi, Kevin. And Gracie, Gracie, we've been thinking about you, um, says, uh, hi, Pastor. Um, and if you're still out in the Carson area, uh, my daughter, Kelsey, um, and family just moved there. Gracie, maybe you guys will bump into each other. And then there's Brother Kevin uh, saying, Hi, Donna. And she says, uh, Gracie says, Please pray for me. I had um, uh, chronic coughing since last Monday. You know, I had that too, Gracie, and I had to go to the doctor in the middle of the week and, um, and so forth. So it was horrible and just that hacking uh, cough, uncontrollable. I'm better now by the grace of God, but I'm going to pray for you. Agree with me, everybody, for Gracie in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would heal that chronic cough in the name of Jesus. It's been going around. It's gone through uh, my body, Lord God, and we just want to send it back from where it came from, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we pray for health and healing for each and every one of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, um... Let's get right down into it, and let's sing that good old hymn of the faith, uh, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Just bringing it up here. There it is. Love this song. Used to know it from the old Baptist church, but we're just going to contemporize it, and it goes like this. What a fellowship, what a joy 
divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the to know brothers and sisters we can lean on him in these tough days amen and you know um, also a lot of us feel like we have a lot of people leaning on us and sometimes we get claustrophobic and we just sense that um, man there's just a lot of responsibility in our lives always trying to hold uh, everybody else up and sometimes we feel like caving in it's like who's gonna hold me up but you know Jesus holds us up and if we lean on him, when everybody else is leaning on us, that's a domino effect that's never going to happen. Because Jesus is straight and tall, he's real strong, and he'll never, ever step aside and let us fall. And all that we represent, all of our responsibilities and the things that the Lord has called us to, uh, our families, our ministries, and, and all, you know, it's just going to hold up because Jesus holds us up. Amen. Isn't that a good word? Let's sing Refiner's Fire. Refiner's Fire My heart's one Set apart for you, 
cleanse me from my sin. I was praying it. I know you were too. 
And as we just cry out to the Lord, he hears our hearts. He sees our desires. He's going to give it to us. More love, more power, more faith, more passion for you, Jesus. Well, uh, <clears throat> Kevin Craig is ringing in again. Hello, everyone. Donna's praying. Uh, Gracie saying, thank you for your prayers. There's Bill and Lori. Hi, Pastor Louie. Hi, you guys. It's good to see you at church last night and this morning. I saw you there. And uh, Frank and Jenny, God bless you. Sister Jenny, you're a blessing. We appreciate all your posts that you have online. And Brother Barry is saying, my wife Jamie's biopsy test results came back good. Yay! Thank you all for praying for her. Amen. Barry and I go way back to the early days of uh, Calvary Chapel Anaheim. And we were in a group. Uh, what was it called, Barry? The Young Adult Group. The Young Adult Group together. That's how we got to know each other. And like Facebook is so good about, it just brings people back together. So happy reunion, everybody. Are you ready to jump into 1 Corinthians? Well, why don't we just do that right now? <clears throat> and it's great to be in a new book. Sure enjoyed Revelation. We learned so many things. But Corinthians now is going to be more of a, a practical book for you and I. We're just going to do the first three verses. And like we've done before with the different epistles, we probably won't take uh, one chapter at a time like we did in Revelation. But we're going to take sections within the chapters. So um, it's going to be more uh, briefer, the content. And that's going to make for a nice flow uh, for uh, myself and teaching and uh, just bringing... Uh, uh, more uh, space, quality, and, and practical teaching in since we're going to have more time and not be rushed to fulfill a chapter every week. But like any book, we need a background. <clears throat> Let me give you the background about this book. Uh, this book was written by the Apostle Paul. And um, <clears throat> we see that in about uh, uh, AD 56, um, he's writing here, and uh, the background is he, he founded the church at Corinth during his second missionary journey. You can read all about it in 1 Corinthians, uh, excuse me, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Paul founding this church where he spent a year and a half establishing the church in the year AD 51 and 52. It was a busy commercial center because of its two seaports. It's right below Athens, so you see that it's got a busy uh, seaport there. It was filled with shrines and temples, just real pagan, and the most noted being the temple of Aphrodite, um, or the also known as the Roman god, <coughs> is Venus. And um, so uh, it goes on. I like this one commentator. It says, where worshipers made free use of the 1,000 consecrated prostitutes there. Well, that's the goddess, you know, Venus and Aphrodite. That's the goddess of, you know, sensuality and, and lust and all. So, of course, they're going to say, you know, oh, let's go to the shrine and worship Aphrodite or Venus. And then there's going to be these ritual religious prostitutes there um, and all. So, it was really a pagan place. This commentator says it was a place to spend a holiday away from morality. And it wasn't just an, a destination like a person would go to Vegas or a person would go to a, a casino like Pachanga or Morongo or, or whatever. Uh, we think of um, different places that's high on the list of, of immorality, you know. Um, it wasn't just a destination that had, you know, that kind of thing. It was actually a city where people lived. So um, morning, noon, and night, it just was a very pagan place. And God planted a church there. The word of God spread, people got saved, and a church was planted. Paul had quite a challenge on his hands trying to teach these Corinthians how to grow to maturity in Christ and to be separate from the, uh, the corrupting influences of society there in Corinth. Hmm. Kind of sounds like a real cool book for you and I, because where we live, 
I'm sorry, America, but you've backslidden. And we as believers, you know, we have to live uh, for Christ in the midst of all these crass things that we see around us and how people live without Christ and how, you know, our, our, our government and all is run without a prayer, without the Bible, and just how far we've declined morally and spiritually as a nation. But the Corinthians had a problem with carnality. You know, they were uh, kind of making compromises, and that's easy to do when you've got a lot of carnality around you. It's easy to kind of just cave in a little bit and say, hey, you know, I love the Lord, but I also, you know, want to be part of the society, and, and these things aren't, aren't so bad, you know. Uh, but Paul addressed um, that carnality as well as a number of other problems uh, there in the church such as factions, lawsuits, immorality in the church, questionable practices, abuse of the Lord's Supper, and the abuse of spiritual gifts. So they were operating in these gifts, and just because they were charismatic in nature didn't make them, you know, separate and holy. Unfortunately, along with that passion for the charismatic gifts, they were compromising in their walk with the Lord. And so we all have to be careful of that. So we need this book. Um, this was Paul's uh, troubled child book. You know, there were other books like the Ephesians and, and the Thessalonians. Oh, especially the Thessalonians. He, he couldn't really say much bad about them, you know. And it's kind of like having a multitude of kids. And, you know, one of them just kind of like is the one that challenges you all the time, the strong-willed child. And that was the Corinthian uh, church. But you know what? Paul loved them. That was one of his flocks. He founded that church. And so Paul knew that he had, a, he had, he had to write a letter. The Lord led him to write a letter. And, you know, isn't it great that we have this letter even today? Look at us, 2,000 years later, and we're studying this truth of God's word, and we are also like in the Corinth, the Corinth, the city of Corinth, wherever we live, whether it's Anaheim, and some of you guys, um, you know, you just live in different places, um, up north, and um, back east, and some tune in from the mission field, you know, to this program, and we know it's, it's part of the last days, and it's in every culture, and how we need this book to teach us to be set apart for the Lord. And so the writing uh, was uh, from Ephesus, and uh, Paul wrote this letter while he was visiting Ephesus during his third missionary journey. So he founded the church during the second missionary journey, but remember he had three missionary journeys, and on that missionary journey he wrote, um, you know, this letter uh, from the city of Ephesus. So I think that's pretty much of the background that we need to um, to give. And so um, why don't we get right right into it? Paul, verse 1, Paul. So he just says his name. I'm Paul, the wonderful apostle. You know, what would we do without Paul? He wasn't part of the original 12, was he? He came later. He even said <coughs> about himself, I'm one born out of due time. And so, you know, he converted later on that road to Damascus. He accepted the Lord, had an encounter with Jesus. And uh, we really needed Paul. Paul was the one that took the gospel to the Gentiles and, and uh, wrote, you know, uh, a great portion of the New Testament. And he was the apostle of grace. Uh, the other uh, apostles had their, um, you know, their job to do, so to speak. Uh, with what they did and where they went and how they preached and, and writing the, the, uh, their uh, letters that we have in the New Testament. But Paul was the one that God used to really bring about the doctrine of grace and justification by faith alone. And he's the one who wrote this out uh, in different forms in his different epistles and, of course, in the great book of Romans, Romans as well. So, we're just grateful for certain people that have certain emphasis, that God has placed them in our life, 
Um, I think of Pastor Chuck Smith was a great influence for me and for so many of us during the Jesus movement because he was a modern day apostle of grace and we learned so much about, you know, the grace of our Lord and how much he loves us and it's not of works, it's we're, we're called to live by grace and <clears throat> and so forth and it's so revolutionary. Um, I think one of my favorite books is Why Grace Changes Everything. By Pastor Chuck Smith. If you're looking for a book to read, um, get that one. It's on Amazon. Why Grace Changes Everything. It's also free on the internet. And uh, just type in there, Why Grace Changes Everything and by Pastor Chuck Smith. And you can download it, read it. Oh my goodness, brothers and sisters, it's such a great book. We'll teach you so much on grace because I know we're always so hard on ourselves. And Satan is constantly condemning us, you know, bringing us down. And we just really need that teaching of grace. We need the modern day Pauls, don't we? And so he calls himself Paul. And then he says, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle means a sent one, one who is sent. And he truly was sent by the Lord uh, when he was down on the ground. You know, there on Damascus, the Lord gave him a call. And, uh, you know, he was called to, to go out and to preach the gospel amongst the Gentiles. And that is what he did. He was an apostle, uh, kind of different than the other you know, 12 or the 11, I should say. Um, so he's called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, through the will of God. And I love that. He just is following his calling. And I think that's for you and I as well. You know, we are whatever we are by the will of God. So Paul was called to be an apostle. What are you called to be? A mother? Are you called to be a father? Are you called to be, uh, uh, you know, a pastor? Are you called to be a, a worship leader? Um, are you called to be, um, you know, a, a children's worker? Are you called to be, you know, in that little part of the world where God has called you to be? Then you are in the will of God. I love that. You always fall back on God's will, especially when things kind of get tough. And, you know, uh, here's another Chuck Smith. He says, don't forget in darkness what God told you in the light. Things can get tough, but you fall back on your calling. This is what we as pastors do. You know, so many uh, pastors uh, can get discouraged and, and, you know, the devil just tells them to quit. You know, you're not being effective. The ministry is too hard and that kind of thing. And so we need to always fall back on our calling. And, you know, if God's called you to be a mom, if God's called you to be uh, serving in whatever capacity, you know, that job, you are called to that job as part of the will of God for your life. God gave you that job. And so uh, it's not always going to be easy what God has called us to. But we just say, Lord, if you've called me, then you've got to give me everything I need. The strength, the stamina, the endurance, the good attitude, Lord. And, um, you know, working with that boss or maybe a difficult uh, employee or uh, something, you know, the project you're working on that isn't you know, going well, it's going over budget and, and, and so forth. You know, we just give that to the Lord. We fall back on the will of God saying, Lord, you've called me. I'm not going to second guess it here. I just know that you are, are with me in this. That you'll give me wisdom and patience. Lord, uh, the, that part of me inside wants to walk away. I want to stick a fork in it and say, I'm done. It's over. I can't take any more. But the Lord is so good. <clears throat> How many times do we feel like quitting and maybe even say, you know, I quit. But yet, you know, the next day the Lord just says, hmm, time, time to get back at it. And it's like, oh, okay, Lord, I really had a hard day yesterday. But thank you that you, um, you got me through that hard day. I'm not going to give up. So many of us are struggling, brothers and sisters, with physical infirmities. I just feel right now that that's a word for somebody. And you've been really, really struggling and trying to talk to the Lord about it. You know, he hears your cry. He knows what you're going through. And uh, 
you know, we all just conform ourselves to the will of God. Amen. Even when it's tough and it includes suffering. The Lord said we would have trials and tribulations. And through these things, we just draw close to the Lord. Paul himself had a thorn in the flesh. It was more than likely a physical infirmity. And he had it ongoing in his life for a long, long time. And remember, he said that he prayed three times that the Lord would take it away. We're going to, you know, learn about that in Corinthians. And the Lord said, no, Paul, um, it's going to be a thorn in your flesh, in your flesh. And Paul just accepted it and said, okay, you know, um, and he learned to rely upon the Lord and that where he is weak, uh, he is strong in the Lord. And he learned that God's grace was sufficient each and every day for him. And brothers and sisters, didn't he rock and roll for the Lord? Think about it, all those mission trips and in and out of jail. And, and then he would, he wrote like, you know, almost half of the New Testament and, um, you know, and then he was martyred at the end. Wow. You know, and he carried around something with him that was a physical infirmity, a thorn in the flesh. I hope that's encouraging to some of you, you know, because sometimes we can get so tired of it because, you know, it's not like something, okay, like, it's like this, like you, let's say uh, you have a problem at work, but you can, at the end of the day, you go home, but see, this is different. When you have physical infirmity, it's 24-7, isn't it? And so that's what I'm talking about. That's why we need the special grace of the Lord. And Father, I pray right now for those who are suffering, Lord Jesus, with ongoing maladies and thorns in the flesh. Lord, I know this is speaking to my brother, to my sister. I just pray special grace for them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that they would just know that they are in your will and Lord, we pray for healing for them. And until then, Lord, just be their grace sufficient, um, be their strength, and be their joy through it all. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow, brothers and sisters, I didn't expect that, you know, to be happening during this Bible study. But I like how the Holy Spirit flows, you know. And I, I you guys who comment, it's just so cool. I know you guys. Uh, you're my brothers and sisters in Christ, and you just love that spirit-filled life. And look what's happening, even right now as we're gathering together through a Facebook program. We're not even at a brick-and-mortar church. Isn't it cool? Um, Sean and I say a lot, I love the Holy Spirit. Let's say it together. I love the Holy Spirit. Oh, he's so good, the way he works and moves and all. Well, let's just move on. Paul says, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. And then he talks about Sosthenes, our brother. Probably Paul's uh, secretary here and may have been the ruler of the synagogue in Corinth who was attacked by the Jews in Acts chapter 18 and verse 17. So it looks like at that time <coughs> he did not know the Lord. But through this, he came to know Christ, and he became attached to Paul and his ministry. And now uh, he's with him. Uh, he's prob Paul's probably quoting um, his words, like, you know, dictation, like a, a boss to a secretary. Um, Take this down right now, you know. And, um, you know, shorthand or longhand or whatever, and, you know, write it down. And so... I mean, it's, it's everything Paul said, but it was written down by Sosthenes. And so God always gives us people to come alongside of us to do, you know, the, the technical things. Um, Paul's not in jail. He's, he's writing from Ephesus, but he's still, uh, sometimes he will prefer a secretary, also called an amanuensis, uh, back in the day. And so this was very, very important, and you would hire these these people. <clears throat> but of course, Brother Sosthenes, you know, just did it pro bono. You know, he's just like serving the Lord and wants to do this for Paul. It was very nice that Paul um, acknowledged uh, his uh, his brother Sosthenes. He didn't have to do that, uh, but he wanted to give credit to where credit was due, and I think that's good to do as well. I always try to remember those people that make my job so much easier. 
There's a lot of background people. Paul, you know, would get a lot of credit. But, you know, when you really think about it, there's a lot of people that make our job easier. So when we are granted notoriety or any level of acknowledgement or success, it's really important to bring those people uh, to attention because we can never do anything really by ourselves. God raises up a team of people. And Paul always traveled with, with a team. You know, it's just it's great to be part of a team. I love the people that God has put in my life and that serve the Lord together with me. Um, oh, it's just so, so great. And so Paul makes that acknowledgement. And then in verse 2, he says, To the church of God, which is at Corinth. <clears throat> and so he says to the church of God, the church, the word is ecclesia. It means those who are called out from their homes to gather to a public assembly. And so, um, it, again, the word is ecclesia. And um, so it was a common word during the day, but Paul used it and it just stuck, you know, for the church. Like what, what better word, you know? To, to be called out from your home to gather together into an assembly for a common purpose. Wow. So it's a good word to the church of God, which is at Corinth. And then you basically just want to laugh because it's like this wicked carnal city. God plants a church and that's just like the Lord, you know, uh, you know, for God to do that. God loves to to bring the light into the darkness. And so God will raise up churches in different cities and different places. And, and, and when you go, you might think, oh, there, there's not going to be a church here in Las Vegas or whatever. But you know what? There's great churches in Las Vegas. There's great churches everywhere. And uh, just when we think that the devil's got a, a, a complete hold, you know, on that place or on that city, it's like, nah, uh God wants to plant a church there, a ministry there. It's just like the Lord to do that, uh, to bring people hope in the light of the gospel. Praise the Lord. And then it says to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Now, that's a good word to use. Uh, sanctified means to make holy or to consecrate or to set apart for a special purpose. And the Corinthians needed to hear this initially from Paul. Like he's going to be coming after him, so to speak, in a good way. He's going to be like, like you know, dropping this theme, but then he's going to bring it up again. He's got a lot of things to say to the Corinthians, but he's not going to drop the bomb, you know, right away. He, Paul's very relational, and he wants to develop that relationship with them. But he's saying that the church of God... Um, and then those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. So he's kind of hinting to the fact of the main purpose of his writing. You guys need to be set apart for Christ, but you are making uh, concessions with the world. And you're kind of, you know, adopting some of the, the things of the world that are not of the Lord and blending them into your Christian life. And so Paul, he's got a lot to say with this. You can't serve two masters. That's what Jesus said. Elijah said, you know, come on. You know, you're going to serve God or serve Baal. But as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. So the growth of the Christian life, um, you know, here it is in a nutshell, right? There's three words that, that kind of uh, put our whole, uh, explain our whole Christian life. Number one is salvation. Number two is sanctification. And number three is glorification. So salvation is when you accepted Jesus. So praise God, that was instant and spontaneous, and we were born again. Now, sanctification is that growth pattern, you know, where we grow in the Lord from spiritual infancy all the way to spiritual maturity. Now, it takes a lifetime, just like people grow uh, spiritually from or physically from baby to uh, maturity, so in the spiritual life. Brand new baby Christians, see, all the way to um, grown-up Christians. So uh, there, we want to keep growing. 
And usually through refiner's fire and trials and all, <clears throat> the things that we go through, we mature in our faith and we move away, look, we move away from this infancy. Now, if we don't do that, we will be going from a baby Christian to a Christian baby. Does that make sense? So the goal of the Christian life is to grow away from being a baby Christian and to go to that next step, just like when we did at school, kindergarten, first grade, all the way on up, junior high, high school, um, and so forth. You know, this is the growth of the Christian life. We have to be patient, you know. We want to grow sometimes a lot faster, but we've got to learn our lessons. And sometimes we have to repeat lessons, maybe repeat a grade. But God is good to move us along. But the Corinthians were staying in this section right here. They were in this arrested state of development. And that's what we don't want. You know, uh, this thing is all brought to me new because my daughter, Kelsey, had twin girls, Sierra and, and McKenna, on February 1st. And the whole goal, you know, as she's been going to the pediatrician and taking the girls, is that they stay, they call it a percentile. And you moms know that, you know. Uh, Jennifer and all, all you gals, you moms know about this, that this is the, uh, <clears throat> the doctors have a percentile. And you want your kids to be on that, that growth curve equal to what, you know, the doctors say where your kids should be at. And you never want them to lag behind. But the Corinthians were not keeping up with their spiritual percentile. They were uh, in the world, but they were becoming worldly. Paul says you guys got to be set apart for the Lord. But they kind of opened the door to the different things of the world. And as a result, they stayed a baby Christian. <coughs> so you've heard me say before, it's okay to be a baby Christian, but it's not okay to be a Christian baby. The goal of the Christian life is to grow, 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 and keep growing. And that's our whole Christian life. Brothers and sisters, we've got so much to learn, um, and we can't do it all uh, at once or overnight. I remember when I was a newer Christian, I just wanted to have everything all of a sudden, and I had to learn quick that it's just going to take a whole lifetime of following Christ. And I have came to the Lord as a teenager, and look at me now, you know. And um, it's like, wow, I'm still learning. You know, I've come a long way, but I've, I feel like I've got so much more to go, even at my age. And I've talked to elderly, um, you know, uh, saints in the Lord, and they'll say the same thing, you know. And I was just, I'm so blessed by that because um, I still feel like I'm, I'm in school. Now, when is graduation? When we die or we go up in the rapture, amen? And then we come to that third phase of the Christian life that will last forever. And that's called glorification. And we're going to be in glory forever, brothers and sisters. We're going to be fully mature and ripe and, and with our new bodies and won't have any sinful tendencies we're going to love one another. We're going to be with Jesus in that beautiful place called heaven. Oh, it's glorification is coming. <clears throat> I can't wait. I was thinking about that uh, this morning. A lot of you guys know that Pastor Raul Reese's wife, Sharon Reese, passed away this morning. They knew she was going to be passing soon. She was a cancer. She was fighting cancer. So... Um, she is now glorified. And Raul had the strength of the Lord to be able to post a video about that today. And I left a little note to him, you know, that we're praying for him. And thank you for all that your family has stood for. <clears throat> and, um, you know, uh, he's comforted. He can go on in his life. He looked good. Uh, he looked sad, but he didn't look crushed, you know, because he's got the hope of Jesus Christ. And that was, that's what he was referring to. Okay, let's clear this up. Can we say it together? The three different uh, words for the three different phases of our Christian life. Number one is salvation. Number two is sanctification. 
And number three is glorification. So our whole Christian life is going to kind of be this long uh, growth phase, just like school is today. And a, and a, a young person might graduate, but still, you know, there's so much to learn. We call it the school of hard knocks. Amen. And that's where the real learning comes is when school is all over. And man, that's something I, I had to learn in life. And even after I graduated from Bible college and, and seminary, you know, um, little did I know that it was going to be the school of hard knocks. That was going to be my greatest degree. And it probably has been yours too. Amen. We've learned a few things uh, in this life and from Jesus. He's been a good teacher. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And he's been so good. We've failed. We've had the red check marks all over our paper. But the Lord has said, you know, let's do this again. You know, Louie, you can't cut corners on this. You've got to learn this. This is my plan for you. I know it's hard. So let's try again. You're going to be able to get this with my help. And so sanctification, being set apart for the Lord for his special purposes. And then it says called to be saints. Well, that's interesting. And the word saint comes from the word sanctified. And, you know, of course, that sounds that way in English, but also in the New Testament Greek language, it's the same. Uh, saints is hagios, and sanctified is hagiatso. So it's the same, it comes from the same cognate word, you know, the core of the word. And so uh, it's, it's good to know. And it also makes sense that we're called to be saints, <clears throat> and we're also called to be sanctified. And since we're saints, we should be sanctified, living that sanctified life. Let's talk about that a little bit. 1 Corinthians 5, 23 and 24. Paul says, May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. And so I love that. We're, we're to be sanctified, set apart, spirit, soul, and body. And it's our whole Christian life. You know, trying to keep from the, the carnality and the worldly things that are out there. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All these things are fading away, the Apostle John said. And then 2 Timothy 2.21, the benefit of this is, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. And so God has a special calling for us. And so <clears throat> as we are set apart from the world, then God's going to use us as uh, a special vessel to do his will. Um, and so I like Pastor Chuck's prayer on this. He always prayed, Lord, keep me useful. Keep me useful. It's easy to compromise. I know, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to, uh, you know, you get comfortable, you watch a movie or something and it's like, I didn't know this was a bunch of trash, man. And, um, you can like, sometimes you can feel it right away. It's like, I should probably turn this off. Other times it's like, it kind of like surprises you and I don't know if it's just written like that or whatever where later on in the movie it starts getting, you know, raunchy. But by that time you're you're so uh, uh, invested in it, you know, it's hard to, to, to shut it off. But you know what? We just want to do whatever God calls us to do. Um, we want to make good choices. We want to uh, not be like the world. We don't have to know everything about, you know, that number one uh, movie <clears throat> or n number one record or or whatever it might be you know just because it's number one doesn't mean it's it's godly and glorifying to the lord if it stumbles you we should just you know be uh away from that and that's associations with other people places we go uh things that we do and of course we really need this more and more now because of the internet 
and phones and things that are constantly coming in. You know, as you're scrolling like we all do on our phones, you know, it's just like the minute something comes up, it's like, that's not of the Lord. It's like, no, no, I don't care how funny it is. I don't care if it's uh, somebody told me about this. If that doesn't glorify the Lord, then it doesn't glorify the Lord. I don't, I don't care. I don't have to know everything out there. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I would be a, I've thought so much about getting more and more into crossword puzzles. They say it's, you know, good for you. And, but so when, but when you do those, you know, whether it's the Los Angeles Times or, or New York Times or whatever, it's like you've got to know so much of the worldly things. Like, who was the the daughter in this movie? And it's like, I don't know. I didn't see that movie back then in 1996, so I'm not going to know it now, you know? And it's like, you know, I would never get that crossword puzzle done because so much relates to uh, modern day things of this life and media and culture. And uh, you know what? Um, I guess I just, you know, don't, don't know it all. I'm not hip to a lot of things, but you know, I'd rather have my mind clean. Amen. With Jesus than to know all the stuff that's going out there or to win a quiz show. Cause I know all these things. I want to be set apart for the Lord. You know, I don't want to, to, to be this lower uh, vessel. Um, I want to be that clean vessel that God can use for his greatest purposes. Brothers and sisters, number one, it makes us feel good. Our conscience, we always just want to have a good conscience before God and others, like Paul says. And then we also want to be set apart, you know, for, for Jesus. And, um, you know, then he'll, he'll call us up and say, you know, well done. You were faithful in the little things, and now I'm going to make you uh, uh, faithful over the greater things. You've walked with me. You've been faithful. You've 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 been committed to me. You've been set apart for me, um, and now I get to use you. You know, and and I want to be used by the Lord. It's the greatest feeling in the world is to <clears throat> number one know the Lord, but then to serve the Lord. And so I don't want anything to hinder uh, me and the the work that God has for me. I know that's your heart too. So Jesus, we just pray that right now for all of us, Lord. You've got this First Corinthians for us. And right away, Father, right here in this second verse, it's talking about saints and being sanctified. And we just want to encourage each other, Lord. As your word says, exhort one another daily. You know, lest we be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And we're doing that, Lord. We thank you so much for this program and all of us who are involved in this. That we're really being encouraged right now, Lord, to walk with you. And to keep ourselves, Lord, for your highest purposes. Keep us useful, we pray, in Jesus' name. All right. And so, in the middle of verse 2, With all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours, both theirs and ours. So I love that in every place. <clears throat> and of course, there were different churches, excuse me, uh, in Thessalonica, churches in Ephesus. And, you know, there's there's every place right now. Jesus died for everybody. And, and we're just praising God that there are, are uh, pastors out there, um, you know, planting churches, missionaries, uh, out there in, in so many places. It says in every place and wherever God guides. I know he, he guided Cheryl and I out there in uh, Norco for all those years. And we had a special calling of, of God um, to be part of that. So I believe in every place. You know, and we're to be going out to regions beyond. And wherever God uh, leads us, that's where we want to be. Amen. That's where we're going to be the happiest and we're going to uh, be able to bear the, the best fruit for the Lord. And so now we end up with the last verse here, verse 3, Paul's signature greeting. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, grace was the common <clears throat> uh, theme 
that the uh, Gentiles and the Gentile world would give to each other, charis, and then, of course, peace. It was the common Hebrew term, uh, shalom, and they would greet each other in that way. And Paul puts them together in that Christian sense and says grace and peace. And Paul has this, you know, <coughs> in so many of his epistles. And um, it's beautiful to, because we, you know, we get those words as believers. We believe in grace, which means uh, you can't work for it. Grace means a gift. Charis or charisma <clears throat> means a gift. And so you can't uh, earn your salvation. <clears throat> you just have to receive it from the Lord as a free gift of grace. Jesus died on the cross. He paid for our sins. And now it's just a free gift of grace. And then um, we have the peace of God. And I love how one is before the other. It's never... Uh, opposite. They're the Siamese twins of the New Testament. You've got grace before peace. It's never peace before grace because you can never have peace in your life until you experience God's grace. And number one, that's for first time salvation. You're never going to have peace in your life. You know, remember John Lennon used to always say, give peace a chance and all that. And but look at the world today. You know, there's, 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 it's just in chaos. There's no peace because there's no peace in people's hearts. That, that's like James says. There's war because there's war in your heart first. And when you settle accounts with the Lord, you make peace with God. God makes peace with you through his son Jesus Christ and you accept that gift. You're no longer at war with God. Now you have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And now you have peace with others, and it goes into your relationships. Um, and you can have peace with other people. And then, of course, you can experience the peace of God in your life. Jesus said, not as the world, I give you peace. <clears throat> not as the world gives. I give this peace to you. And so Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He's got such a beautiful, strong peace for each and every one of us. Uh, in our hearts, no matter what we go through, we can have that peace. And not just when there's peaceful times, but we can have peace even through chaos and the storms of this life. Thank God uh, we can have that peace. We don't have to just be self-destroyed because we're so anxious and caving in and, and breaking down. You know what? The Lord has promised to be our peace and to sustain us. And so we know it comes from His grace. We can't earn it. We're to relax and give our lives to the Lord and all that we're going through. Uh, like the old song says, have a little talk with Jesus. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, it's just all I need to do. And maybe, you know, it really hasn't been my fault that I haven't been doing that. It's just I've been so busy and and uh, just trying to survive and everything. But I'm telling you, when you finally get to that place, you know, you could be driving in your car and all of a sudden you just break before God and say, Lord, I just, I give it all to you. I haven't had a good talk with you in a long time, Lord. You know the stress and the duress I'm under. Jesus, I give you my life and, and Lord, <clears throat> please give me your grace and your peace because I, I can't survive without it. Oh, God hears that prayer, brothers and sisters. And and he just wants to do that for you. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, feeling led to pray again, that you would grant peace, peace, peace to the oppressed, Lord. Those of us who are so oppressed with what we've been going through. And Lord, you've led us to be together here in this is what you're speaking to your people. And we pray especially for those who are under so much strain. We support them, Lord. We love them. You love them. You've brought us here today to proclaim the freedom and the peace of Jesus Christ. Release our brothers and sisters from the bondage, Lord, of worry and fear and and of all the concerns of life, and Lord, and they haven't even had a chance to sort it all out, Lord God. 
but you're doing it right now. You're making sense of this to hearts, Lord, that are listening. And they are experiencing the freedom and peace of Christ that they haven't felt or sensed in a long time. So thank you, Jesus, that we're together. Some of you stumbled into this program, and little did you know that the Holy Spirit was going to be hitting you right now with just what you needed. Isn't God good? Oh, how we love the Lord. And so, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I hope you can stay with me. Every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have this Bible study. You know if you miss, it's always going to be there. My YouTube channel, Louis Monteith. Uh, I've got all five years on there. But let me go to the uh, community comments here. And um, <clears throat> Jacqueline Goudet is coming in from our missionary there in uh, Los Cocos, Nicaragua. God bless you, uh, Sister Jacqueline and your family. And look who's there, Cindy. Sister Cindy, Heidi who? That sounds like you, Cindy. And so we thank you so much for your joy. And then Romina and Manny are saying, set apart for Jesus. Yep, Romina gets it because she, she loves the Lord. And Gracie says, staying in the word and fellowship with our Lord will help us grow. So true, Gracie, um, that is so true. And it's just consistent, isn't it? I mean, you know, if we ever walk away from that, we're going to recognize right away that, that is so true, and we need to get back to it. So might as well just stay in the Word, make it a priority, keep in fellowship. Amen. Gracie, thank you so much for that. Uh, me too, learning and growing. Yeah, And you know who used to always say that is, is Tony. And that was uh, Gracie's husband who passed, and he's with Jesus now. I would always ask Tony, um, how you doing, Brother Tony? Whenever I would see him, and he would say, learning and growing, learning and growing. So thank you for that memory, Gracie, <coughs> that you're bringing to me of your beloved Tony, who's now in the presence of the Lord. And so uh, we got some more amens, and, and also uh, Brother Kurt down there, uh, peace, praise the Lord. Yes, amen to that. Well, let's sing one more song. And let's sing, Peace Give I to Thee. Peace give I to Thee. Peace give I to Thee. Not as the world gives, give I to Thee. Peace give I. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for helping to make this Bible study uh, Facebook Live program. Because you're watching, you know, we, we're just, we, I keep doing it, and I keep uh, getting the word out, because you encourage me, uh, just by your uh, saying hello, and your 
your attendance here and let me know that you're out there and that you are blessed and sharing that common faith of Jesus Christ. I sure appreciate you. Love you in the Lord and just pray blessings now in the name of Jesus that the Lord bless you and keep you, guide your life, fill you with his Holy Spirit and may the, the peace of God maintain over your life. And because you have been in the world, like Gracie said, then you are just so uh, strong in the Lord and that peace will be so indelible, so strong, so beautiful. And we just pray blessings now. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen.